Good morning, UP scientists. Uh, yesterday we were talking about dissolving at a nanoscale, and today we're going to keep uh, reading about dissolving, what happens when things dissolve and other things, and we're going to be using uh, one of the digital books to help us figure that out. So let's start off, let me just share the screen so we can get started. And here we go. So yeah, so today we're going to be reading about dissolving. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to think back to um, this idea of inferences and we're going to discuss what kind of inferences we can get from the models that we've used so far and some of the ones that are going to be presented to you in the book today. So in the past, we used models to help us explain why that food coloring separated into different dyes. Our models can also help us explain why some solids dissolve into liquids and others do not. So these are the models that we had in previous lessons from this unit. So we had the pasta model, we had our different models in the book made of matter, we had the fan model in class, we had our drawn and digital models of chromatography at the nanovision scale, and yesterday we used our modeling matter simulation in solubility mode. So today we're gonna to be reading this book about a brother and sister who decided to make lemonade at home. So this is gonna help us answer our investigation question. At what happens to the molecules of a solid and the molecules of a liquid when you mix them together? Remember the, the story in this book is fictional. The people in the book don't actually exist, but the ideas in it are based on real science. So in this book, the older brother is trying to explain to his little sister why some ingredients dissolve. Is going to use diagrams and models to help them explain what happens at the nanoscale. So just like in the simulation, uh, models in this book can help us understand dissolving. So in order to access this book, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the website. It's going to be linked in the question off to the right here. And it, I'll pull it up here. So here is your So it's um, apps.learning.amplify.com slash elementary. I'm gonna see if I can get Mr. Patterson um, later this week to actually push this out to everybody as a bookmark in their bookmarks bar. And we're gonna use a different login. And I actually discovered this morning that this login works for every single uh, unit and simulation we're gonna use. So we're just gonna use this one going forward instead of um, the random letters that we've been using. So the Username is going to be remote learning 2020 or remote learning at triamplify.net and the password is remote learning 2020. Okay, so this actually has all the units for elementary school. So we're gonna to have to scroll down. So this is from kindergarten to fifth grade. So fifth grade is gonna be all the way at the bottom. So here are our four units here. So we did patterns of the earth and sky already. Right now we're working in modeling matter. So we'll go there. And if you look at the top, here's the simulation we used yesterday. Here's the chromatography model. Here's the dissolving model we're gonna be using um, later in tomorrow's lesson. Um, and here are our student books. So today, the one we're going to be using is Solving Dissolving, the purple number five. And uh, if, for reading in Spanish, we have Libros para Estudiantes en Español at the bottom here. So same one, purple five. So if you click on this, the book's going to pop up for you. And it just takes a minute to load. There we go. So there's the first page. And you can flip through the book just like you would a normal paper book. It has table contents and everything else you need in there. And you can uh, use this up here to zoom in on certain parts. If you're having trouble seeing it, you want to see the diagram a little closer and scale it up and down. And I think this will let you highlight some of it. Yep. So that way, if you want to copy paste, if you want to um, point something out to somebody while you're reading, you can do that. 
and the little finger will just let you change the page. Okay, so I'm gonna get off of this and go back to our presentation. So what you wanna do now is go to that book, preview the diagrams, illustrations, and captions that are in the book. So you don't wanna read through the whole thing right now, just focus on the diagrams, the illustrations, and the captions that are underneath them. So, so here's a um, diagram here. It doesn't actually have a caption on this one, but you wanna look through all these illustrations, just skim through. This book doesn't have a lot of captions, but here we go. We got a couple captions here, a couple of illustrations. Yeah, so just basically looking at the pictures, seeing what you notice. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill a couple things that you noticed in that question off to the right, right now. So we're gonna read the first couple pages together. I will model how to make an inference from these pages. So here's the first page. Uh, so I'll go ahead and read it aloud now. So, my sister, the detective. My little sister, Maya, thinks she's a detective. She's always reading mystery books and pretending to solve cases. Maya can be annoying sometimes, but she's usually okay. I was taking care of Maya after school one day last week. Maya was bored and she was starting to let get on my nerves. I had to find something to keep her busy, so I said, let's make lemonade. I picked a few lemons from the tree in our yard and cut them in half. And then Maya and I took turns squeezing out the juice. I got the big pitcher out of the cupboard and filled it about halfway with cold water, then asked Maya, which do you want to add first, the sugar or the lemon juice? Sugar first, shouted Maya. I found the sugar in the cupboard and let her scoop a few spoonfuls of sugar into the water and stir the mixture with a big spoon. We need to add more sugar, my sister told me. It all disappeared. I looked at the water in the pitcher and she was right that you couldn't see the sugar anymore. The water looked clear. Still, I knew she had just added a whole bunch of sugar and it couldn't have gone anywhere. I poured some of the water into a cup so Maya could taste it. She said, hey, that's sweet. So why can't I see the sugar? I laughed and said, it's a mystery, Maya. The mystery of the disappearing sugar. You just found your first piece of evidence. That sweet flavor is a clue that the sugar must still be in the water, right? Maybe so, Maya said but I need more evidence to be sure. So we read on page five uh, that Maya said she can uh, still taste the sugar in the lemonade, even though she can no longer see it. Um, so remember when we did our flavor ingredients test uh, where we observed the sugar dissolved in water? Uh, sugar uh, must have dissolved in this mixture of lemon juice and water also. So, uh, so this is an inference because uh, the text on pages four and five doesn't Necessary doesn't directly say that the sugar dissolved. Uh, we know sugar dissolved because we observed similar things in our investigations to what Maya observed in the book. Um, but when we read, we can make inferences by putting together what the text says with what you know and have experienced in order to figure something out. So yeah, so it doesn't say anywhere up here directly that the sugar dissolved, but we see here um, in the uh, on page five. Uh, Maya says all the sugar disappeared and but when she tasted it it still tasted sweet just like when the sugar dissolved in our experiment so I'm gonna read pages six and seven out loud right now so more evidence so I had an idea about how to prove to Maya that the sugar was still in the water I bet I can get the sugar back out of the water I said how she asked I held up the little cup of sugary water that Maya had tasted and said, let's leave this water on the windowsill for a while. It's just going to dry up, she said. What good will that do? If there's sugar in the cup, it'll still be there after the water dries up. This way, you'll be able to see if the sugar is really still there in the water. When detectives need more evidence, they investigate, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Maya went over to the windowsill and watched the cup, waiting for the water to dry up. It won't happen right away, I said. You have to wait a few days. Why don't you come finish making lemonade with me now? Maya got really into our investigation. She checked the cup every afternoon for the rest of the week. Each day there was less and less water in the cup, but we still couldn't see any sugar. Maybe you're wrong about the sugar still being there, Maya said. Yesterday, when we got home from school, Maya ran straight to the kitchen to check the glass. Diego, she shouted as she showed me the thin layer of solid sugar at the bottom of the glass. Look at this evidence, the sugar was still there. 
So what inferences do you think we can make from what we just read? So some of the inferences you might have uh, got down there were things like sugar dissolved into the water, uh, sugar molecules mixed in with the water molecules, or the sugar was visible in the cup, uh, again, once the water evaporated. So they don't have to be big groundbreaking things, but anything that you were able to get from the book that wasn't specifically stated is an inference that you're making. Um, so one other thing is, we want to answer this question. How does the diagram on page six right here uh, help you understand what happened to the sugar when it was mixed into the water? So now we're going to go ahead and have you read the book. So continue reading from page eight through to the end of the book. Pause after each section of the book to think about some inferences you can make in that section. And we're gonna eventually need to write those down. So in this next activity, once you're done reading the book or as you read the book, you can fill in the questions that are gonna appear off to the right here. And so we don't have our investigation notebooks, but we can answer it right here on Edpuzzle. Uh, so what we're gonna do is record three observations that Maya made and your inferences for each observation. Each one's gonna be a separate question. So for each question, you're gonna write in the page number you found it, what observation Maya made, and then the inference that you got from that observation. So reading the instructions up at the top here, it just says, in the book, uh, Solving Dissolving, Maya makes a lot of observations of the mixtures she and her brother Diego make. In the table below, you want to record three observations that she makes. Be sure to record in the first column the page number for each of the observations from the book. And then record an inference you can make based on each observation. Remember to use what you know along with the diagrams and text in the book to help you make inferences. Um, so an example's been done for us here. So this is the one we did together. So on page five, Maya observed that the sugar disappeared when the water mixed together, uh, or when mixed with the water. And our inference was that the sugar molecules were attracted to the water molecules, so the sugar dissolved in the water. So go ahead and answer those three questions now. Remember, you want the page number, Maya's observation, and your inference for each of the three responses. Okay, and to finish up today, we're just gonna discuss the idea of solubility. So these models in the book helped Maya make inferences about why sugar dissolves. So what inference could Maya make about water molecules? So you should have gotten there that water molecules are in fact attracted to sugar molecules is the inference that Maya could make. Um, next one is what inference does this model help us make about sugar molecules and water molecules. So inference you should have made there is that sugar molecules and water molecules are attracted to one another. And how this model shows that is that they're touching and they're moving around together. Um, the flat sides of the triangle here are fitting in with the flat sides of the hexagons that represent the sugar molecule. So this is a different model. This is the one where we were talking about, they were talking about water and cinnamon molecules where the molecules in the cinnamon are not attracted to the water molecules. But how can you tell from looking at the model here that the cinnamon molecules and the water molecules are not attracted to each other? And there's a couple ways you could have told that, right? They aren't touching each other here. And the round shape of the cinnamon molecules does not fit with the flat sides of the triangle water molecules. So, and if you look back in the book, what observation did this model help Maya understand? So our main observation here was that cinnamon didn't dissolve in water, right? So what do you notice about the molecules in the substance that don't dissolve? Right. 
So you should have figured out that, hey, these molecules are clumping together. They don't spread out at all. And so the, all the cinnamon molecules are staying with each other away from the water molecules. Um, so, and the reason that Diego here decided to draw these cinnamon molecules as circles and the water, water as triangles is because that these, the shape of this molecule does not fit with the triangle of the water molecule that he had been using. So we're gonna go ahead and read page 16 and 17 out loud here. So, sugar molecules dissolve in water because sugar molecules are attracted to water molecules. Water molecules pull the sugar molecules away from the clump of sugar, almost like a magnet pulling a paper clip across the table. Are the water molecules actually little magnets, My ask me? No, but molecules can be like magnets. Some molecules are attracted to other molecules, like some metals are attracted to magnets. Do you see how these water molecules act like a magnet and the sugar molecules are like paper clips being pulled toward them? I said, pointing to my model. Because those sugar molecules can be pulled away by the water molecules, sugar can dissolve in water. Another way to say that sugar can dissolve is to say that sugar is soluble in water. What about cinnamon, Maya asked? It didn't dissolve. Cinnamon is different. It's not soluble in water. I'll show you. I picked up my pencil and drew another model to show Maya that the molecules that make up cinnamon were not attracted to the water molecules. I drew the molecules that make up cinnamon as round circles and the water molecules as pointy triangles because those two shapes won't fit together. See how the molecules that make up cinnamon stay clumped together, I asked? It's because they aren't attracted to the water molecules. No matter how much you stir the mixture, the water molecules would never be able to pull the clumps of molecules that make up cinnamon apart. You know cinnamon is not soluble in water because it doesn't dissolve. So another way to say that sugar can dissolve is to say that sugar is soluble in water and cinnamon is not soluble in water. So something soluble in water, what does that mean? Answer it over in the question to the right. And then finally, to wrap up today, we just have, we have the definition of soluble right here. So um, for something to be soluble, it means it is able to dissolve in water or another liquid. So what I want you to do with this definition is first type it down over here so that I know you read it and looked at it. And then um, if you went ahead and got a, um, a piece of paper, a little pad, a notebook, um, something to keep all your vocabulary and go ahead and write this definition down in that notebook also. That way you have quick access to it whenever you need it and the lesson's going forward. So in the next lesson, we're gonna have a chance to make our own mo models of solubility like Diego made some in the book today. So that's gonna be it for today. Once you're done with this Ed puzzle, go ahead and turn it in and I'll see everybody on Tuesday. Have a nice day.